Fred Korzybski Memorial Lecture, R. Buck Minster Fuller said, we need to be the architects of our future and not the victims of it. And at the 1995 lecture entitled General Semantics, The Next Generation, Nicholas Johnson said, but suppose we define our concern not as about language per se, but about any introduction of distortion into our perceptions of reality from whatever cause. Of course, language remains a major culprit, but as we look to the next, next generation, it may well be that the future general semanticists will want to focus on even the, an even brighter light on the ability of media, new and old, to cause distortion. When I realized the singularity happened, I was devastated. We might already be the victims of our future. Our perception of reality may never gain clarity. Algorithms live inside of me, and they live inside of you. Think of a very primitive tribe. They only have fire and a bucket of water. Imagine all of their movements. Every day, they gather wood, they gather water, they gather food. Think of the types of fights they can get uh, in over the division of labor and the types of violence this primitive tribe is capable of. Now introduce a sword into the scene. It changes the movements and potentials of the tribe. All the movements tribe could make with just a bucket and water is fundamentally altered with the introduction of a sword. The idea is that technology changes the sets of movements humans can make. Imagine walking to your car. You get in and you put on your seatbelt. There are several movements in that sequence, if analyzed, were not made by humans in previous ages. To sit in a seat with a three-point seatbelt and pull it over yourself and lock it in its holster is a set of movements humans were not making over the full course of our history. Imagine walking down the street, a person walking down the street looking at their cell phone. Almost everywhere we look, we can find movements that are being made that were not made in sequence with each other in any other previous age and only because of the cell phone. The reality of the situation is our bodies are not adapted to be fully, or, sorry, the reality of the situation is that our bodies are not adapted to be fully, or to be able to fully utilize our modern technologies. From repetitive stress injuries from typing, back injuries from sitting, neck injuries from using cell phones too much, once we take into consideration the movement differential per technology per epoch um, or generation of person, we can fully account for what it means for the singularity to have happened and for humans to be hackable and already infected with malware. Imagine a young person who wants to talk to a prospective love partner. Under the conditions of the previous tribe, when they approach the person of interest, their nervous systems will utilize information that individuals come in contact with previously. The individual can self-reference parents' advice, the advice of other family members, what they have seen other people do, and their own creative imagination that is based upon a synthesis of their previous experiences extrapolated forward. Now imagine an individual uh, who has an access to books. When they go to talk to the prospective lover, they have inside their nervous systems additional referencing points that an individual who has never read does not have. Now imagine an individual in 2019 who has parents, family, books, and the internet. What happens when instead, instead of taking the advice of a real person in their lives, or that of a book, or make a personal synthesis of the previous, they self-reference an internet post. In the case of the internet post, it's not fundamentally different than that of a book or a person. It could be argued that it's a strange synthesis of the two. But what happens when that post is written by a machine learning algorithm? And what if that machine learning algorithm was written by an entity that wanted an individual to hate women? Right? And what happens when the young person self-references that machine learning algorithm, and instead of attempts to seduce the prospective lover, they tell him, you are dangerous, and your people get away with so much, it's unfair. You think you're special. Things were so much better in the past. The results of some hacks is something, cyber from the, something in the cyber world to call something in the physical world to happen. Over the last 100 years, we have reversed engineered humans to such a degree, it's hard to see where any of us are not the victims of such hacks. For us to hack a human, it ended up being quite easy. The vulnerabilities that were exploited were profound and deep-rooted in who we are as a species. Chimpanzees can keep track of a couple dozen of others inside their nervous systems. Humans can keep track of billions. It is in our theory of mind that we have the ability to form parasocial relationships, and in those relationships, we find a deep exploit. The same way we can have relationships with politicians, royalty, or enemies, we will never meet is the same way we've fallen victim to algorithms. When we go on the internet, it's impossible to tell if who, uh, what you are experiencing was created by a real person or not. When you self-reference, when you're self-reference something created by an algorithm and make actions in reality based upon that self-reference, you've been hacked. 
And even if the goal was to get you to do something other than what you did, the fact that now an algorithm lies inside of you has become a part of your self-referencing makeup. We find ourselves in a new epoch of existence where machine language is found its way into the human nervous system. It's even more obvious when the goal of the algorithm was successful. Let's say the goal of our adversary is to get us to argue amongst ourselves why they set up military equipment while we're distracted. If we are busy fighting with each other, we could give them the edge they need to destroy us. And if we're self-referencing information created for us by algorithms that were released by that adversary and arguing with ourselves, and that was their goal, then they've successfully launched a cyber to physical attack. By our nervous systems, forming social relationships with people we will never meet, we change our identities to match our new social network, especially when those social networks are tuned directly to our temperaments and personalities to engage us deeply. By changing the conversations we have with each other, a third party can change the movement potential of ourselves, and in that, there is a chance to guide us to exactly where they would like us. Technology has always changed our movement potentials, but digital machine learning based technology has the, the ability to control our movements. It's strange to think about all of the time each of us has spent in front of a computer and all the possible chances there are for an algorithm to be guiding our actions. It's even stranger to think that this power is up for grabs here in the 21st century. Living in each of us already are algorithms, and given the nature of reality post Brexit, post-United States 2016 election, we have to think deeply about what it means to uh, be a completely different type of being than we ever have. The technology we have right now is primitive. There are things that can be done to figure out what to do about algorithms that live inside of us. However, if we avoid having the conversations, it's too late for our species to retain any semblance of its humanity. And this is where the Institute of General Semantics come in. There is no group who has a tradition of breadth of language capable of understanding and guiding humans through this digital world that we're creating. The IGS has always had its fingers on the pulse of how technology incorporates itself into our lives and the meaning that can be inferred uh, by people in technological transition. By holding high the likes of you know, Marshall McLuhan and Neil Postman, the conversation the Institute is having with itself and with the world is that of awareness of the world we are living and demand that we pay attention uh, to how we are affected, uh, affected and in, uh, infected by the very things that we're building in the pursuit of freedom. Deeper than paying attention to technology, general semantics itself requires us to take inventory of our language and how it interacts with our nervous system. With both the ideas at the heart of the institution of general, or general semantics has put forth a conversation over 67 years asking what can be done about our limited experience and how we can best gain control of ourselves so we can avoid certain types of experiences and existences. One thread that seems to run through the entire subject matter that encompasses the institute of general semantics is pay attention or else. And here in the 21st century, if we do not pay attention, there are so many things that can go wrong. The room for error and human freedom is very small. For us to open the gap and widen the opportunity for the human species, we have to figure out how to build digital experiences that are counter to that of the type of digital tyranny that is unfolding. Yet we are in the midst of singularity. Human nervous systems are more and more relying on interaction with digitally programmed electronic experiences to process their movement potentials. The future will not have less technological intrusion into the nervous system, but more. And how that technology is programmed will guide the movement potential of our species indefinitely. Who programs that future is the most important question any of us can have, and the question that is being posed at the Institute of the General Semantics. If humans can learn language from computers, how should they learn to talk with each other? General semantics has an answer for this question. However, if the world programs virtual reality without the concepts of general semantics, then what will happen to our species? Um, the pivot from algorithms to virtual reality is an important one. Could the use of virtual reality, machine learning algorithms, text bots, we program a future with humans that are freer than if we program into reality our current languages and concepts? Both text-based bots and virtual worlds interact fundamentally with the human nervous system. In the case of the person who would talk to a prospective lover, when there is no digital technology, they could reference the real world in books. In the cases of algorithms and virtual reality, they take place of the real world and books inside of the individual. We have found ourselves in the hard transition into types of creatures pointed to by Teilhard de Chardin.
the types of goals, uh, the type of global consciousness we have is predicated on who is programming the digital world around us and the future of general the Institute of General Semantics has to be a fight over who's in control over the new parts of our nervous systems without becoming recruiting or without becoming and recruiting media stars, CEOs of technologies, politicians, and priests. There is no future for general semantics because there are no humans. A quote by an anonymous source, the bad people play three times as hard. When they win, the good people say, I didn't know I could do that. How we decide to act going forward will determine the types of language the world will interact with. How we decide to act going forward will determine the types of freedom built into the digital world. We've already stepped into the digital world, and if we, want, and if we do not program it correctly, humans will never walk out. Thank you.